Hello all my fellow followers. Uh, just so you guys know we have a new update to Roar 3 Solutions. It is a I'm reading Inventador. This has actually become a really big hit uh, in my sales on CG Trader. I wanted to extend a thank you to all of those of you who have purchased the model and uh, exciting news is now that it is rigged. Uh, rigged only for Cinema 4D so I just want to walk through the rig controls real quick. So first off the display I have is just quick shading and lines. Uh, that's just to make this a little bit easier to see as I work through some of the controls. I have a heads up display that you can uh, simply re remove if you choose to and it goes away and all you have to do is select the Lamborghini Ventator controls and in here we have the controller bar. Now I also want to give a big thanks to uh, Jamie over at Cinema 4 Depot. He is an outstanding individual. If you are in, interested in any kind of Cinema 4D plugins, highly recommend you go there. He has taught me how to rig and, and always finds little tweaks for me that are just outstanding. So without further ado, uh, this is the Aventador that I have spent uh, quite a bit of time now building and, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy about it and it's been a, a very uh, good product for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Uh, I do have my license plate on it. Uh, you can change that. That is just a texture. In fact, uh, on the Cinema 4D model, a lot of these are alpha textures. So you can go ahead and just swap out that texture for your own. It'll be mapped. Uh, to remap it is pretty straightforward, but uh, you can always reach out to me if you ever have questions with that. So, if I come back in here to the controls, it's important that you select the controls because that's where the Espresso is actually built. And to show you the Espresso, here we go. Whole lots of everything going everywhere. So, uh, controls uh, for different things. We have movable parts. I have a lot of headlights and a lot of functionality with the headlights. And uh, a cool option here is the car color that you can then adjust within the uh, controls block. And one thing that I've kind of gone in and added as a separate note is in the wheels, we have a setup so that we can run the model. I can select the entire null and if you watch the wheels, they will nice and neatly track the ground. Uh, again, thanks to Jamie at C4 Depot for that. You know, it's one of those really cool little additions that uh, you can throw this onto a spline. Those wheels will fall right along the ground path. Uh, I have the uh, access point rigged so that way you have a uh, front wheel swing. So if you're going to uh, align into a spline, uh, you'll be able to get some really cool stuff out of it. So that's the one thing that you can't really see right off the bat that you'll get to work with. Uh, level of detail. Uh, it's just a simple script that I've thrown in for uh, allowing you to right here real quick adjust whether you want subdivision or not. That's all we're talking about here, subdivision. Okay, And I do have it mapped out so that uh, each percentage is an extra subdivision step. Uh, be aware that I did put quite a few polygons into some of these pieces so it may start to get real boggy if you have a slow system. Uh, color this is pretty straightforward, but pick your color and voila, away you go. Uh, it's really that simple. Uh, we have the window wipers. These will only work when you animate the vehicle by running the timeline. So as long as you're running the timeline, you'll get the wipers to rotate back and forth. Uh, and same thing when you shut them off, they will remain static. Your wheels will rotate. So that is going to be adjustable. It doesn't follow your spline, but you probably could just tap it in and have it uh, adjust to your spline. The steering wheel also rotates with the main wheels. The driver's door lifts up and opens. The passenger door lifts up and opens. The rear hatch opens. And I have a uh, fairly detailed engine in here, but there is, uh, it's meant to be a look over the top type of uh, motor. So uh, it looks good inside the model. It looks good when you're looking at it from the outside. It is not an accurate representation of a Lamborghini engine. So take that into account. If you want to purchase this model that you may not uh, get the 
the end result, what you're looking for by building parts for a Lamborghini Aventador by looking at the, uh, the engine bay here. It's important to note that. I've had a lot of people that have asked that question and no, I, I do not design like that. The spoiler is adjustable. It has a two stage, so it actually will give you kind of a, a nice little uh, rotation to it. And then uh, we get into headlights. And the headlights are something that you'll only see when. So the headlights will uh, just illuminate whenever you turn them on. And you'll have a little volumetric glow to it, uh, along with a whole bunch of other things that are added on to the headlights, such as the interior lighting will then illuminate your dash, uh, buttons, all the goodies. Uh, just as if you turn your lights on in your real car. Uh, we also have turn signals, both right and left. You'll notice that the glow will appear whether your turn signal is on or off. That's because it's not visible in the render whenever you are uh, not enabled. So you just select them on and then they are visible in the render. And you'll have a little glow that'll reflect off of the front and back as well as the tail lights will light up. Okay, that's about all I have right now. For any questions, email me at roar at roar3dsolutions.com. Always appreciate uh, you guys looking at my models and uh, purchasing them.